Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. It is a Flash Talk brought to you by Water Street Tavern and Bryant Heating and Cooling. I am joined with head men's basketball coach Rob Senderoff. And uh, coach, thank you so much for carving up some time. I know it's a busy time of year as we get ready for uh, Northern Kentucky and then the the home season. And it, it's hard to believe that we're already we're already here next week. It's everything started for serious. Yeah, I, I'm excited for us to get started. Um, you know, we're we're sort of ready to go here and uh you know practice for this this is our 25th practice today uh and uh we're ready to play and 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 start playing games and uh and getting this season going so i'm i'm excited for 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 the game next monday well you guys have uh, wrapped up obviously the the closed scrimmage season we did have a, a nice little open exhibition for our fans to take a look at your uh look at your squad but as you guys have gone through these scrimmages and these 25 practices, what have you learned most uh, about the, the, about team 107 as we get ready to tip it off? Yeah. I mean, obviously, I mean, it starts as, as you know, and, and, and everyone knows the, the guards that we have returning, uh, Sin, Malik, uh, Gio, Vaughn, uh, th those guys ha have, you know, they've proven they can play in this league. They've proven they can win in this league. Um, They've proven they can be counted on to to be competitive night in and night out in this league. So, um, you know, the scrimmages, uh, one game we played without Gio because because he was nicked up and one game we played without uh, Malik. So other guys got an opportunity to play um, and to, to have expanded roles, which, you know, I think helped. Uh, it helped get guys some confidence and and get guys an understanding of what it takes to compete in this in this conference. Um, and then our front court, which is somewhat unproven, uh, we've had different moments where where Claron has played really well. You know, coming off practice today, Rico had a very good practice today. Um, Akeem is coming back from from injury, um, but but is progressing. Um, Chris Payton was was playing really well, and he uh, he got injured, so he didn't play in our second scrimmage either. So I'm hoping he'll be back for Monday. Um, but just just looking forward to to seeing how everybody gels and 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 how we compete together as a group, and and excited about it because we we do know we have some players and and some guys that that we know can help us win games in this league. Well, let's talk a little bit about the the schedule at hand because. Uh, what got launched here a few days ago was the men's mid major top 25. And you and I have talked at length about your, uh, your schedule as a whole and how competitive it is. And we're talking double digit uh, members of your schedule are either ranked in this list or receiving votes. So, I mean, you guys true? Are, yeah. are putting together a, a, a pretty phenomenal uh, college basketball lovers schedule. And it, and it starts with a uh, NKU comes in ranked uh, 19th in the mid major poll, but, like you are atop their league in the horizon. So what can we expect from the Norse? Yeah, listen, really good team. Uh well coached team. You know, uh one of our former guys here is is on staff there, uh Eric Hout. And uh the head coach there is a an excellent, excellent coach, Darren Hornman. And they returned their three leading scorers from last year's team. So they lost in the Horizon League championship game. Um, uh, I think they were 20 and 12 overall and return their top three players from last year's team. So they're experienced. Uh, they they have quality players uh, picked to win their league, like you mentioned, and, um, you know, have one of the leading scorers in their conference, have one of the leading rebounders in their conference, have the freshman of the year back in their league. So it's going to be a, a challenge uh, very similar to, to what we'll face when we play in January and February in the MAC. So, you know, I like in this game to, you know, in in conference play when when we go play, you know, at Toledo. I mean, very similar. We go play at Ohio. Playing at Northern Kentucky is going to be a tough environment. Uh, it's going to be a well-coached team, and and it's going to be a really really competitive game that we'll have to play well in to win. But you know, early in the year, the winning's important. Obviously, every game's important, but. Just trying to learn, you know, what 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 we can do in those type of environments is going to be important as we move forward. Yeah, and you look at who you're playing away from the friendly confines uh, of the Mac Center. I mean, you're you're at Houston, at College of Charleston. That that's a 
College of Charleston team that's receiving votes in that mid-major top 25 poll at Gonzaga, at Cleveland State, and then a neutral site game against a uh, New Mexico State squad that's also ranked. So you guys are putting yourselves out there in, like you said, some tough environments because when you get on a February night where it, Friday, either a Tuesday, Friday, or Saturday on the road in the in the MAC, it, it can get pretty raucous, and it you guys are giving yourselves a, a kind of chance to test your metal here early on. Yeah, that's 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 what this is for. Uh, you know, the non-conference when when you're in the MAC, the non-conference is to prepare you for league play, right? Uh, obviously, you know, if we if we do well in these non-conference games, that that will only help us on a national scale. But regardless, it's going to prepare us for what we're going to see January, February, March. And we're going to use these games to to get our team hardened up for, for what it takes to win on the road in conference play in, in a mid-February game and uh, in, a, in a March game because uh, we're going to be tested throughout the non-conference starting, you know, with Northern Kentucky. You know, we then come home, play Ohio. Uh, I, I'm sorry, play Baldwin Wallace, um, which you know, again, it, it, home opener, uh, playing a non-division one. This, this is this, as much as anything. I have, I've had a tough time. The schedule's as hard as it is, and I, I've had a tough time getting those games. So, we're playing Baldwin Wallace, which, you know, it, it's meaningful for different reasons. Uh, but, but it's our home opener, and it's part of a doubleheader with the women who are playing Florida State, which is a huge game for them. And then we come back and play Portland, who's one of the top teams in the West Coast Conference uh, a, a week from Monday, play Monday on the road and then a week from Monday at home. And uh, that's going to be an incredible challenge, just like as we move forward, you know, we play a Wednesday morning game. Well, why are you playing Wednesday morning? Well, the MAC tournament, if you're the number one seed, you you play early. So we're trying to get ourselves all sorts of looks at at what we're going to see as we prepare for this season and um you know we're we're gonna we're we're gonna test ourselves for sure i know you mentioned that and you you know i wanted to sleep well tonight and i think you're now gonna make it tough for me on on a midweek supposed to only sleep poorly the night before games and night of games now you're gonna have me sleep poorly you know four days before tip off so thanks dan you can you can send me the bill for the cups of coffee uh, 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 the season, but you but you look at the like you said you start November you know, on a Monday and then you play five games in twelve days so that almost yeah. makes, kind of simulate what it's going to be like in that grind of the Mid American Conference season. I I can't imagine that was uh, by accident. Yeah, you know all of these things. I, I, you know we try and and I joke around about the schedule because. I know it's difficult, but we try to be purposeful a- as much as we can. Some of these things you can't control with with dates and times. And uh, we're, we're playing that Wednesday. It's senior night in football. So, OK, we're going to play early that day. But that's good because that's going to help us for if we're if we're in the MAC tournament, you, you could potentially play an 11 a.m. game in the MAC tournament. So we wanted to play early. So those things are all good. And we try to be intentional as best we can with our schedule and who we're playing and where we're playing them when we can. Um, and some of these things are a little bit out of your control when it's hard to get games or you're, you're having a tough time getting a date, but you want to play a game. Um, so, so there's some challenging, you know, five and 12 days, like you said, but um, you know, th- it, all of these things will test. It'll te- test our depth. It'll test our toughness. It'll test our recovery. Uh, it'll test our conditioning. Uh, it'll test how we compete on the road. It'll con- it, it, it'll test all of these things so that when we when we hit conference play, th- there'll be nothing we haven't seen. You know, there'll be nothing we haven't seen once we get there. So, how we stick together through this, how we compete through this, how how we find ways to win games or or not win games and respond to that, like how we handle all of these things in November, December are going to help us springboard to January, February, March, win or lose. And, and obviously we're, we're, we think we have a team that's capable of winning these games. I'm not putting games on the schedule to not win them, right? We're putting them on the schedule to try to win them. So let's go out there, see what we can do. You know, I just saw a video that coach Cal did, you know, talking about Kentucky and saying, you know what, you know, they're not ready and they've got, 
all Americans on their roster. So it's, it's tough when, when, when you're putting your team together and we've got new faces and trying to get them all, you know, on the same page, but we'll get there. I'm not, you know, we'll get there and, and let's, let's enjoy, you know, the process of, of becoming the team we can be. Well, the, the process starts uh, for, for us at home, getting to see you live and in person on a Thursday at five against Baldwin Wallace. So for the, the uninitiated, those that have may have a, uh, missed the the exhibition that we had what can we expect from a uh, team 107 here as we as we get ready to, to go yep you know for us being competitive is, is first and foremost like that that's that's a that's one of those non-negotiables here in the program so you got to be competitive and we've got to compete together you know we want to be an unselfish team that that roots for each other that that enjoys each other's success uh we want to be a team that is the first to the floor when, when the ball is on the ground, we want to be a team that takes charges when there's charges to be taken. Uh, we want to be a team that covers up for each other on, on both ends of the floor. So, uh, you know, that that's what I expect. That's what the program's, you know, been built on well, well before Team 107. That's that's how it is. And, you know, one thing about the program here at Kent is sort of to some degree – you adjust to the program and the program doesn't adjust to you. So um, that that's what these guys, when you mentioned Sin and Gio and, uh, and, and Malik, that's part of their job with the new guys, Vaughn, to instill that. And that's what we've done during these practices. Like, this is how we do it here. And, you know, I'm not interested in how you did it at in high school or prep school or junior college or at this school or that school. This is how we do it here. And uh, and and that's what it takes to win. It takes sort of what it takes. So um, we'll be ready to go. And 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 I'm not going to sit here and tell you we'll be firing on all cylinders on day one. I hope we are. We 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 we've you know we've had good starts to the year. So I I expect us to play well. But um, we're we're going to get there at some point because we have too many good players with high character, with high basketball character. That that's a term we talk about a lot too. Is you know, having high basketball character, caring about winning and putting winning first. So we, we have a group that that's 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 how we are. So uh, we, we're going to we're going to compete and be proud to to represent Kent State and, and hope that our fans and everybody who's following you and listening to this, you know, will we'll come cheer us on because the Mac Center, when when it gets rocking, there, there's very few places uh, as hard to win in as the Mac center. So when we're home and we don't have a ton of home games, non-conference, but you know, when we're home, we need everybody there. We need them there and we need them loud and we need them supporting our guys. So um, hopefully we can have that. It would be great. Like you said, it gets started at home Thursday, November 10th, 5 PM against Baldwin Wallace. Like you said, you're the lid lifter of a fantastic doubleheader. Yeah. Let's plug as always KSU ticks.com. That's KSU TIX.com to, come see you live and in person. But Coach Senderoff, thank you as always for a few moments of your time. We're looking forward to tipping things off and, and getting the, the madness off and running. Absolutely, Dan. You're the best, man. I appreciate you having me. And uh, let's let's get everybody out there uh, for our home opener on, on the 10th and, and, and moving forward. So go Flashes. Thanks, man.